I think I actually am the nation's most prominent faculty supporter of trigger warnings at this point. Uh, I use trigger warnings in my classes. I think they are absolutely appropriate. I think they should never be mandatory. But I also think that it is absolutely crucial to create an environment where everybody can participate in a classroom discussion. And part of that is recognizing that we all come into the classroom as whole people who have our own experiences. And so if I am talking about the murder and the desecration of the body of Emmett Till, I would kind of like to know whether one of my students has just lost a son. And if one of my students has just lost a son, I would talk about Emmett Till in a different way than I would under other circumstances. I don't think that my free speech is being violated if I make that choice. And so what I do in my, in my uh, classrooms is I say, A, we're gonna be discussing some really hard, difficult stuff, and if that brings up emotional issues or psychological trauma, let's talk about that. So you're, what if, you're, but you're, your partner made the big boy pants argument, and you're making the opposite of that, I think. Or are well, you not? I, no, are I, you not? I, I, th I, I think that, I think that, that it's, it's absolutely crucial that people have the, uh, the I, well, let me put it this way. I think that being called a racist is not the worst thing in the world. It's something that has happened to me. I have been on the receiving end of that, and I dealt with it. Um, you, you can address that. Uh, yeah, sorry. I, 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 you know, I've, I've had that experience, and sometimes the people calling me a racist were kind of right, and sometimes they were kind of wrong. And in either situation, I learned something from it. Um, and I would, if somebody thinks that I'm a racist, I would far rather have them tell me that than not. All right, let me let your opponents respond to, the, to your argument for Th those limitations on, well, do you call those a limitation on speech, by the way? Do you call them a facilitator, an enabler of speech? I, Which are they? Yeah, no, I, th I think I, I, what, I, what I call it is a content note, and I, it's a way okay. of in, in enhancing it discussion. It should be mandatory, and on that right. we agree. Yeah. Okay. I, I, well, Christian I mean, Power. this reminds Christian me a little, Powers. Eric Posner, who's a, a University of Chicago law professor, just wrote an article for Slate Magazine, basically arguing that in def defense of a lot of these different uh, of speech codes in particular, and um, he didn't, I don't know if he mentioned trigger warnings because he said that what people don't understand is that students today are really are children and that they need to be protected. And that's, that's sort of what is behind this idea, um, which to me doesn't seem like something that's really encouraging a, a robust sort of intellectual debate. Um, but look, if you want to do trigger warnings, you can do trigger warnings. The problem that has been raised has been with professors who have been told that they must provide trigger warnings. So at Oberlin, for example, uh, a lot of the professors revolted. And, and at um, University of California, Santa Barbara, they were, they were, the students were demanding them. And I think that that is a very different thing, especially because if you look at the list of the things that could potentially trigger some th uh, students at Oberlin, they said it could literally be anything. Yeah. Uh, and so how that, you know, how does that not chill a uh, professor of I living guess, in fear that they're going to trigger. What something. if trigger warnings make you rage filled? Do you need trigger warnings about them? <laughs> <laughs> I guess yeah. you well, would... two things. First of all, in, in terms of the idea that this is infantilizing people, uh, the person who did the most to make me think about the importance of trigger warnings is actually in the audience here tonight, uh, and she's a combat veteran. So I don't believe that it's infantilizing.